have a little bit more time uh, for questions. So I, I don't want to waste most of our time. I think we are slightly behind by five or so minutes. Uh, may I just quickly, before I call him, I just want to ask each one of us to bow down for a word of prayer. Okay, shall we pray? Our lovely Savior, which art in heaven, we want to thank you so very much, Lord, for thy mercy and the grace that you have towards each one of us. We are here, Lord, sitting at your feet. May you now speak unto us so that we may be able to understand the Sabbath and what it means to us. Be with the presenter, use him, and be with every participant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother, Pastor, come. Thanks. Thank you very much. The topic is Biblical Sabbath and Ashanti Culture, a Missiological Perspective. We're going to look at the Bible and the Sabbath and how it relates the similarities with Ashanti culture and then what the church can do with it. It's a co-authorship between me and uh, Brother Eli Elisha. If you are not familiar with Africa, that is Africa map for you. This is for Pastor Ikoto. Come and show me. Mine is not working. Africa map for you. It's not working. And the Ghana is there. This is the map of Ghana. Ghana is bounded by three countries. Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Togo, and the, this is the sea. This is the map of Ghana. Ghana has 10 regions, political regions. We are going to talk specifically about the Ashantis in the middle, the, the, the Ashanti region, the small where Kumasi is. And uh, the Akan people comprise about, uh, from here, uh, Brunhafu, Ashanti, Central region and Eastern region. But uh, the Ashantis are going to be our focus. This is not mine. This is the distribution of population according to the regions. The Ashanti region has the highest and then it follows in that order. If you want it, you can get it from the uh, uh, organizers. You can get it. The statistics, their accounts, has 40, they are 47%. 47.5, that's 48. And the other um, tribes are there. But Ghana has over 100 tribes. 100 tribes. Ashantis are only one. This is the religion. 69% of Ghanaians are Christians. 16% Muslims. 15% traditional religion. In the traditional religion. Out of the 69%, seven Adventists are 1.1%. And if you take the 69 as 100, we are about 2.2. .2. So we are not that many. This is Ghana City. Eight years ago, the city was more powerful than the dollar. Four years later, it depreciated to two cities to a dollar. And now it's four cities to a dollar. Next four years, you know what it will be. Ghana has bauxite gold, diamond, manganese, a lot of resources in, in the country with few people. Ghana is the second largest producer of cocoa in the world after Cote d'Ivoire. Ghana has oil. We mine oil in the sea. Plenty of oil. We have gold. The land, Ghana was formerly called Gold Coast, the land of gold. If, now if you go to where the Portuguese built their castle, you can take gold from the dust, but it's protect, prote, uh, protected by the government now, so you don't go there. It's on the, that's why they name it, because where they, na they, they built the castle, there were gold from the sea. You can just take it from the, the sand. It has been discovered. Ghana has the longest artificial lake in the world. It was built by Kwame Nkrumah, where we have our dam. There are tourist sites. Please come and you enjoy it. This is Ghana Fufu. If a Ghanaian travels and he wants to go home, this is because of this. It is Fufu. Mafu gave this. So if uh, this fellowship, this fellowship, not me. I didn't add this one. 
then the, the brother Banks was talking about the fish on Monday. This is the fish. It's smoke, he called it smoked fish. It's not fried. It's smoked. Very delicious. You remember this guy who spoiled the uh, penalty with U Uruguay? Football. Ghana is also known for football. This is Valley View University. Very soon, this school is going to be true because we have a standard campus inland headed by a former student of this school. And uh, this year, there are going to be two universities in Ghana. That is, this was built by the Germans, called Echo Center. No air condition, nothing, but it is airy. That is the German genus for you. These are some of the people in Ghana. Kwame Nkrumah is here. Uh, I, this is normal. This is Kwame Nkrumah. He's here also. Kofi Annan is there. This is Nkrumah's daughter, a former member of parliament, and now the, the chairman of the Nkrumah party. There are so many people there. The four presidents of Ghana, they are also there. This is the Ashanti people that we are talking about. The Ashanti king. The Ashanti kingdom was there a long time ago, before the, uh, the British came to colonize the country. And the man is still powerful. More powerful than the president of Ghana. Let's go to the main thing. The Ashantis, through, through their culture and traditional beliefs, have the concept of Sabbath. If you name the days, the days of the week, the sa Saturday or Sabbath is God's day. God is named the Sabbath in our, our language. Let me briefly su summarize this so that we go. When the Portuguese came to Ghana, the Ashantis observed them that they were attending church on Sunday. So they named them Sunday. Uh, the white man is called Sunday. But God is called Saturday. They said these people are not worshipping God. They are our Sunday worshippers. But the God of Sabbath is the one we are worshipping. So that is, that concept is there. And it, it has presented mythological advantages to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Out of the 16 conferences in Ghana, six are in Ashanti region alone. And they control the rest of the, even the churches because they travel a lot. They are traders. So they also, in other parts of the church, they are also controlling it. So the Sabbath is actually ingrained. The British anthropologist wrote that the Ashantis knew the Sabbath before the advent of the, the, the white man. Before the advent of Saturday. Uh, uh, the colonial masters. The Ashantis on Sabbath rested. They were warlike people. They conquered the whole Ghana. They conquered part of Cote d'Ivoire, part of Burkina Faso, and part of Togo. But on Sabbath, they don't go to war. They rest. They don't do anything. That is traditional. And the day, the day, if I mention the day, the day that they give to Sabbath is Sabbath. God told Moses, I am that I am. The name for Sabbath in Ashanti is I am's day. It's called mini mini da. It means the I am's day. Before the Bible came to the Ashantis, Saturday was called the I am's day. I don't know the history of them. The, the history is so long. But I'm, I'm trying to conclude that they may have been descendants from, the, from Egypt. Because from history... The Songhai Empire, the Mali Empire, and the Ghana Empire, if you read his, uh, African history, when the Ghana Empire collapsed, they traveled down south. And they settled in Burkina Faso, and then they came to the northern part of Ghana. From there, they came south. And that's why after the independence, they named the country Ghana, after the Ghana Empire that collapsed. The concept of Sabbath... The Old Testament, uh, <laughs> our professor said it, so I'm not going to go to that area. The Sabbath is there in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Our professor has said it already, and we have written the paper, you can read it. But the concept of Sabbath among the Ashantis. The seven-day Sabbath is traditionally acknowledged and observed in Ghana, especially among the accounts. They have two names for Saturday. One is called Mene Mene Da, and that is I am that I am's day. The Mene Mene Da means I am that I am's day. I've written it. And the one is called Humeda. Humeda means Sabbath. That is a 
the translation of Sabbath is Homeda. So the Ashantis knew the Sabbath before the Bible came to them. One of the traditional account names for God is Shediam Pon Kwame. And Kwame is a Saturday born. If someone is born, I was born on Monday, I'm called Kojo. If my, my son Daniel he was born on Saturday, it's called Kwame. God is called Kwame in Ashanti. So among the Ashantis, when you are doing campaigns, you have no problem. For the Sabbath, they understand it and they observe it as such. So God is a Saturday born. That is the meaning. Traditional beliefs and biblical, there are so many things Ashantis have in common with Seventh-day Adventists. The Ashanti queen never wear earrings. If he, she does, she will be de deposed. Never in her life. Because when the queens are born, they know from their first day that this will be a queen. And the kings too, they know. So they don't wear earrings. The Ashantis traditionally knew that there was only one God. We call it God Almighty. That is the Tredium Pon Kwame. The Ashantis knew that there is Trinity. So traditionally, if you go to traditional worship, they have something they call Nyamidria, God's tree. And that tree has three branches in one. And that's what traditionally they used to in their worship. So they had, there are a lot of things that the Ashantis knew about God. And it's similar to Seventh-day Adventists. So if you go to Seventh-day Adventists, it's very popular among the Ashantis. And they, they are many, many indeed. Out of about 400,000, over 400,000 Seventh-day Adventists, more than half are Ashantis. More than half. There are many there. Uh, they recognize the supreme deity. I've said that that's already. And uh, this is the symbol. We call it a Dinkra symbol. Where what I'm wearing, they are symbols. Ashantis, they talk with even cloth. The cloth you wear. If I see Ashanti, the cloth is when I can see his morning. He's happy. He's doing this. And uh, this one, if you see it, is for God. The mighty and supreme God. This is called Jinyame, what Rollins used when he was the president. He said, only God can destroy him. And God did destroy him. They, 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 uh, remove him from the office. The Ashanti people, funerals, Traditionally, funerals among the Ashantis is done on Thursday. And the Thursday means the day of mourning. That is the tree name. Yaw Yawada is Yawdeda, the day for mourning. Saturday is the day for Sabbath, the day for God. Until the coming of this weekly uh, work cycle, funerals and everything, marriages, everything was not done on, sa and on Saturday. That day is for God. And it was not allowed to actually was, uh, do anything. This is a British author, Bradford. He said, there is a growing evidence from the African contest, continent that a, a Sabbath consciousness exists among its peoples and has from time immemorial. This consciousness long pre predates Christianity and certainly does not derive from the European ecclesiastical establishment, which apparently uh, strove mightily to suppress it. So that, that man observed that. The history of the Seventh-day Adventists is deep-rooted among the Ashantis. And it has a lot of things. So many books have been written. This is a professor emeritus in history, Professor Osu he, he came to Zimbabwe to teach. If you get C in his class, that is A. That is the best grade you can get. He's a very tough guy. There is a lot of things Actually, among the Ashantis, read the book, please. Read the book. And uh, the article, you enjoy it. A lot of things that the Ashantis have in common with Seventh-day Adventists. Since the donation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ghana in the 19th centuries, in 1884, if my memory serves me right, it has done very well with the Ashantis. Uh, we've already said that we have 24 million as of the uh, 2010 census and uh, over 100 ethnic uh, groups 400,000 are Seventh-day Adventists, more than half are Ashantis we have, uh, have already mentioned that there are six, 16 conferences in Ghana, 6 are in Ashanti region alone 
and the other members are also, most of them are Ashantis, even though they are not in the Ashanti region. We have now over 916 Seventh-day Adventist operator schools and hospitals. And most of them are in Ashanti area. We have uh, so many of them. Uh, my time is uh, fast spent. Implications for Seventh-day Adventist mission. We're going to talk about the prospects for mission, challenges, and strategies. Prospects. Common grounds for evangelism. If you go to any Ashanti, you tell them about Sabbath, he accepts because they know it before even Christianity came. The schools and hospitals concentrated in Ashanti region is also advantageous because when people go to school, they get used to the Adventist philosophy and the, the change lifestyle alone is uh, evangelism. And the hospitals too, we have a lot of them there. So we can capitalize on them. So we've written that these ones should be capitalized. But there are also challenges because among the other tribes, they called the Seventh-day Adventist Church Ashanti Church. So that if the other tribes, somebody is converted, an old lady will call you and say, why are you attending the church? You are not an Ashanti. So that is also a, a, a challenge there that we need to overcome. The schools and hospital concentration in the Ashanti region is also a disadvantage to those who are in the other parts of the country. They may have to travel to Ashanti before they can get Adventist education. And most of the time, the Chi language, the Ashanti language is used even in the other uh, territories in worship. And that is also a detrimental to most people who are tribal conscious that this is not for me. Strategies. We should intensify evangelism among the Ashantis because we have similarities with them. We maximize the benefits of schools and hospitals, establish more of them, and we debunk the notion that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is an Ashanti church. We establish schools and hospitals among the other tribes also, and they use the, their language contextualization in worship when we are there, so that others can be attracted. Conclusion. These people attempted to study the concept of the biblical Sabbath, Seventh-day Adventist Sabbath, and the Ashanti Sabbath. The study established that the Seventh-day Adventist Seventh-day Sabbath as a biblical concept in the Old and the New Testament is also con uh, is in congruence with the cultural beliefs also of the, of the Ashantis. Prior to the introduction of the Christianity, Ashantis knew about Sabbath. The Seventh-day Adventist church has maximized and strategized in its mission along that cultural um, beliefs to increase its membership among the Ashantis as a whole. The implications for Seventh-day Adventist mission in Ghana were, were discussed and strategies and to maximize the opportunities and address the challenges were also suggested. It is hoped that this paper would be a contribution to the Seventh-day Adventist mission among the Ashantis in particular and Ghanaians in general. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And um, maybe what we can do for the sake of time before we ask questions, I think you can also present them together we can ask. Okay. Wow. Wow. So many questions. All right. May I start with... Uh, say, uh, maybe you can move forward. There's a mic here. Or maybe you can... Um, as um, we're speaking right now, Valve University is having six campuses, um, three in the northern part of Ghana and three in the south. And um, the one that they are turning into a full-fledged university is in the uh, middle bait, getting closer to the north, Bronha for region. If, um, um, so um, that is um, um, to, to sort of address the needs of the people in ar around the middle bit and those in the north. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor John, for the insightful presentation. Uh, well, I, I understand that back in Africa, when the missionaries came, somehow 
they still adopted many of the names, like in our country, in my, in my own tribe, the name we used to refer to God. They adopted it. However, this name has its own conceptual value. From the presentation, it seems that you've used the Christian concepts to somewhat elaborate the Asante concepts of Sabbath God. But I assume that probably these particular names that the Asante people have, have their own conceptual values. Probably if you could highlight on that, for the sake of not being able to synchronize some pagan uh, values into Christianity, just for the sake of what I could see, a parallel that we see in Asante culture with Adventist Sabbath and all other uh, beliefs. I don't know whether my question is... I, I, I'm, I'm so trying to understand basic, what you're basically saying. Basically, what I'm saying, do you have certain conceptual values which you assume there is no Adventist Sabbath anything, and tell what are the conceptual values that you have in the Asante itself? Before even you learned about the Sabbath, did this name, you said it, it's the name of God, but what is it that is about this name of God? I address it. Um, the name for God is. Let let me address the issue first. We need to understand that the, the first missionaries who came to Ghana were not Seventh Day Adventists. They were Catholics. They came from uh, uh, the Portuguese came first, and then later the British came. Uh, even the Den the Den Denis also came. Those from Denmark. They were not our Adventists. Adventists came later with a truck. Somebody saw a track on the beach and then he read it and said he was even not an Ashanti, he was a Fanti. But when he came to Ashanti, they, they, we realized that it has, it has some similarities. And these names were not adapted from Christianity because the Ashantis were there long before the advent of the, the whites. But the Ashanti concept of God I understand when you do uh, missiology and then this contextualization, at times you have to borrow the word. No, that is not the thing. The Ashantis knew God. They knew that there was one God. And I told you, even the trees and others, I don't know the English name, but I know the tree name. It's not because of the English that it was borrowed. The Ashantis knew God. And they knew that God was the God. The, sat the Saturday is named after God. You understand, Pastor Ekoto will understand better because he understand what I'm saying. In Ghana, when somebody is born, the day of birth is named, if I hear your name, I know the, name, the day you were born. Because the day you were born, you were born has a particular name given you. When you see Kwajo, Kwesi, Kwame, Yao, they are all names of this thing. And God is named uh, Sabbath before even the wise came. The concept of God is that he's omnipotent. He, he is one. Even though there, there's also this concept of Trinity, because of the God's tree. But the God is omnipotent, is only one, and uh, he can do whatever he can. That is the, that concept. But I, not, I don't know whether I've been able to address your this. But it's not the mythological problem when we, we have to borrow, we have to just borrow and uh, get that. Uh. Thank you. All right, let's come this way. There's a mic somewhere there. Can you see, transport it? It's not working? I wanted to contribute to the answer to him. Sorry? I wanted to contribute to the, his question. Oh, you want to add or explain? Yeah, explain, contribute. Okay, okay. go ahead. Uh, I think the question I, from history, uh, Ashantis knew God in the sense of a supreme being. Now, the attributes given to God is similar to the attributes given to God in scriptures. Now, you may ask, why did they worship smaller gods then? Now, Ashantis believe that God is like a mother. Now, when a mother, or let's say a kid poops on your tie, you don't cut it off. You actually wash it away. So God has the heart of a mother that when you make a mistake, he's so big-hearted that he does not correct you. Or he gives you room to improve. But the smaller gods, which is traditional, 
are there to straighten you up. Now that's where uh, Christianity brings Christ into the picture. But the Ashantis understood God as a supreme being who uh, in description is someone who is very supreme and no one can challenge. In other words, there is only one supreme being according to the Ashantis in Jerusalem. Thank you so much. We can, uh, excuse me, you can give it to my pastor here. <laughs> Thank you for the... Thank you for the presentation. Uh, if I heard you very well, you said that uh, you don't know the origin of the concept of Sabbath in the Ashanti people. Uh, I am interested in the reason why they keep that Sabbath apart from the Bible. We know that he, for us Adventists, we are keeping it because God rested, he sanctified, he created in six days and so on. What is the main reason for them to keep that Sabbath apart from the Bible? Do they have any reason for that? Yeah, um, as um, Pastor John Apia was saying, um, the, um, the knowledge of the Sabbath is there. But what um, he, he was saying um, was that um, the origin of, of the people of the Ashantis is what um, he, he was saying um, um, he, he, he could not trace it. But um, with the Sabbath, um, it is part and parcel of the Ashanti people. When um, they were even mi uh, migrating with these um, walls and, and that stuff, they were observing the Sabbath day. As, as, as a, a day of rest, as um, uh, Pastor John Apia mentioned, from Sunday up to um, Friday where, um, for them to do the activities. But for the Sabbath day was reserved for um, God, Kriyadam Pankwami, whom they believe um, um, created um, the whole world and on the seventh day rested. So this is a concept known to them already before the, the uh, inception of the um, uh, uh, Christianity in the um, co um, cultural fabric of the people of the Ashantis. What we don't want to infer is that the Ashantis were Israelites. So most Ashantis believe that they were Israelites. That's why I, was, I told you where they migrated from. You see, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. And the empire is just, Timbuktu is Mali area. Timbuktu, where the, the Songhai Empire, Mali Empire, and the Ghana Empire is there. But most Ashanti don't want to go too much that they were Israelites. But most Ashantis also believe, even among the, uh, the chiefs and the kings, they believe that they were Israelites. But they came down instead of going to Cana. I, I, I don't want to, don't take it as official because nobody takes it official in, in my country. But that, that, this is the, what you ask. They, they knew God. Their concept of God is similar to that of scripture. For them, God is everything. God is everything. They knew that God created the world. As Paul was saying, they were worshipping these smaller gods because they also thought that God is so supreme that mere human beings cannot approach him. You need an intermediary. You see the point now? So they were approached God, this supreme God, through these smaller gods. As people do it through Mary. They will do it through smaller God because God is so supreme, you can't approach him as a sinner. You need an intermediary. That is what I said. I don't know where they came from. But for that one, reserve it. Because even the Professor Usman is a Seventh-day Adventist. Professor Emeritus is also struggling with it. He's also an Ashanti. But we don't want to go into that. But they knew it. The concept of Sabbath is similar to that of Scripture. And it is not a pagan understanding of God that they, when the uh, Christianity came, it was Christianized. No! They knew it. They understand it better. They can even explain it more than maybe you do. Because they were warlike, but on Sabbath, they don't go to war. They don't go to war. They don't do anything. They just rest. No marriage, no funeral, no anything. Okay. Yes, sir. Protocol has been broken. <laughs> Hello. All right.
Thank you very much for your presentation. I was wondering when you were presenting that uh, the Sabbath uh, is already ingrained in the Ashanti culture. So I was like, the job is easy for Seventh day Adventists. But thank you for highlighting some of the challenges that it faced. But thank you, Emmanuel, for the, I'm uh, co uh, talking about the, the African traditional religion. I'm also concerned about that because some traditional Africans, uh, some proponents believe that the uh, Christianity is a white man tradition. Uh, uh, white man introduced it. So I think, I don't know if you concentrate much on your paper about the, how uh, uh, Christ, uh, Christianity is not a white man uh, 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 tradition based on what was already experienced in Africa before they could come. I think you could talk much about that and some of the things that we have in common and some of the differences. Thank you very much. And, um, um, with that, um, we, we will um, introduce you to some authors because that was not our main focus for this um, study. You can check um, um, Sabbath Roots by um, Bradford. We have a copy in the library. You can also um, check um, um, JJ Naughty. He's also having an article on that. Then um, J.B. Dankwa on the account concept of God. Um, they address those issues. But that was not our main um, focus for this study. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Ikoto. Okay. okay, thank you very much for this topic. Um, you know very well, I spent four years in Ghana. I, I have a question that has, maybe today you'll give me an answer. I spent four years there and I saw how passionate, especially the Ashantis are with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I'm happy that you highlighted, I want to tackle the missiological aspect. I'm happy that you highlighted that though this passion is good, because of the, the strong, I will call it um, pride, eth ethnical pride. Ashantis are very proud of their, their ethnicity. So they go to the extent of establishing Ashanti or Chui speaking churches even in America and UK. So if, if you are in UK, you go to a Ghanaian church, you cannot speak the language, you cannot worship with them. So my question is related to the Sabbath observance now. How sure can you be, and I have that question for many other aspects of the church in my country also, it's, it's bugging me. How sure can you be that an Ashanti who knows the Sabbath, the Ashanti way, when he becomes an Adventist, stops looking at the Sabbath as an Ashanti, but is now looking at it as an Adventist? Or shouldn't it change at all? If not, why then bring them in? Let, let me say that. I've been fighting. I'm also Ashanti. All of us are Ashantis. Pastor Dankwa is an Ashanti. The Ashantis are travelers. Even if he's a king, he will travel and go and be a messenger. People take pride that they travel. If you go to Ghana, an international airport, you say, travel and see. So the government even promotes traveling. <laughs> they travel everywhere. When you travel to any part of the world, a Nigerian and a Ghanaian is there. You just search for them. You might not have seen them, but they are there. This is a problem in Ghana. And I, as a pastor, I fight with my fellow Ashantis. Ashantis are very proud. I have to tell you. They are very proud. They are, it, 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 it is so ingrained in the Ghanaian distinct that only one person has been a president who is an Ashanti. All the other tribes will vote against the person. Not because he's not competent, but because of the Ashanti pride. But that person, the wife was uh, from another tribe, so they, they got the vote from the wife. <laughs> they are very proud. In such a way that even the Ashanti pastors, when he's pastoring a church that is not in an Ashanti area, he wants to impose the Ashanti things there. In Accra, where is a gang speaking area? They speak, more than 80% of Accra churches speak Ashanti. Gee. If you visit an Ashanti in his office and he's a professor emeritus, he will speak to you. He will never speak English. 
He will ask your name. He says, so, oh, then let's speak tree. Then you speak tree. You see, that has created a lot of problems. This problem, you might not see it. Other tribes, they don't like Ashanti, the Seventh-day Adventists, not because of our message, but because of the Ashanti factor. So we are advocating. When, wherever I go, I'm an Ashanti. I tell them I'm an Ashanti, but nobody is speaking tree here. We speak English because this is Accra, Accra Church. Because in Accra, everybody understands English. But they will never speak. If you go to the north, everybody understands English. But they will never speak. He stands and he says, eh, He just said that everybody understands you. Let's speak. To the extent that they want to make tree the official language of in Ghana. So this is a, a pastor knew it. We need to address that. Otherwise, it will have problem with winning other people other than Ashantis. All the schools and hospitals are concentrated in Ashanti. Valleyview University was located in Accra with a fight. They wanted it in their area. And the then a union president said never because he was a gun. I used my veto and he said, that's why Valleyview is still where it is. If it were in Ashanti, it should have been like Babcock or Ayas. Because the Ashanti, they have money and they can donate. In an Ashanti church like this, if they want to raise $200,000, they can raise it in one Sabbath. Because so one, one person says, I'll give uh, 10000 uh, Somebody say 5000 Somebody say, and then you get the money. When we are going for a camp meeting, and then you don't pay. You, people who bring them, you can even take some food home. They, they give, but they are very proud. I hope this man is not proud. And this man is not proud. I always fight with them, and we need to address that. Otherwise, we have problems with other tribes. And then with the second part of the question, um, coming from, from um, the Ashanti culture and bringing the Sabbath um, thing in the pagan way into the church, from my personal uh, experience, um, I'm from a pagan home, and um, coming into terms with this Sabbath concept of the Seventh Adventist Church, and, and um, that which um, I used to relate to, it's, um, it has really helped me to, to appreciate what the Sabbath release. And um, it's, it's, it's not um, out of um, proud or pride. <laughs> but um, you, you, you appreciate it very well. And you know that, yes, this is really a day set by God for, 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 for his um, um, creatures to worship him, rest, and praise him. And um, you actually come into terms with it from that pagan background where you um, understand it there. And, and with your relationship, your relationship with, with the supreme being, which is God. Thank you. Thank you. It's time. Just a, a brief one. Okay. Actually, it's not a question, just a little comment. And I'm just curious to know about uh, this origin of uh, Ashanti people. It is true you have already mentioned it. But because of my uh, personal study, it's true that I've never uh, study uh, such uh, ethnic group, uh, Shanti people, but the way you uh, presented things just uh, uh, made me to think a bit, because uh, I don't have any 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 uh, uh, idea about Ashanti people, but um, I discover in my personal studies that in Jewish tradition, Shabbat is the name of God. Uh, I read uh, Abraham Heschel, and he has emphasized many times that Shabbat is the name of God. So I, I was even having this question to ask, where are the Ashanti people coming from? But what do you say? Maybe I have to think it a little bit serious and to do my personal studies to get the origin of Ashanti people. Because in your culture, you also say Shabbat is the name of God. In the Jewish tradition, Shabbat also is the name of God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it has been quite wonderful. And uh, I wish we, ca we could have a little bit more, 20, 30 minutes, so that we can learn more of the Ashanti. And then ca we can relate to the Sabbath. Thank you so much. I'm sure now it's... Um, Thank you. It's the time for uh, another group of presentation. And uh, 